My name is Ethan Enzer, and I represent United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, which is an agency in the Department of Homeland Security. And it is my pleasure to welcome all of you this morning to a special naturalization ceremony that is being hosted today by the Ferguson Library here in Stamford. Today will be a very special program at which about 40 of you, in short order, will be taking the oath of allegiance to become United States citizens. I'll be back in a short while to give a little bit of the protocol and actually start the process, but at this time, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our host, Ms. Alice Knapp, who is the president of the Ferguson Library Stanford. Ms. Knapp. Good morning and welcome to the Ferguson Library. Um, whether you're from this community or you're here just for this special occasion, let me assure you that your local public library is here for you as you start your journey um, and and start your journey as a citizen of the United States. Um, this, for, this library actually has passport services um, down here, so you might be able to take advantage of it. And I see in the back that our register of voters are here, so that's also an opportunity for you to register to vote. And um, welcome, enjoy, and have a great day. Thank you, Ms. Knapp. So we're going to transform this space in a few minutes into a special session of the United States District Court Bridgeport with the Honorable Judge Warren W. Edgington presiding. And in just a few minutes, we will actually start the uh, process. But before we do that, I just want to remind all of you that we are honoring the libraries in our communities, and if you look at your program, there is a very brief passage on the back cover which states that the Ferguson Library here in Stamford is one of six public a peer library citizenship collaborative enterprises and working with United States Citizenship and Immigration Services here in Connecticut to host naturalization ceremonies during National Library Week. And that's today from, we're the first actually, uh, beginning this morning. And there will be an additional five or six others around the state, which would include Danbury, Hartford, New Britain, the Otis Library of Norwich, and the Rockville Public Library in Vernon. So what better collaborative intersect can a library have with the community than to assist with the assimilation and learning that happens in all of our communities each day. Library services are free. Library services are vital because they help integrate and educate. So with those thoughts in mind, I would like to also remind you that if the Registrar of Voters is here for the city of Stamford, that's great. But if you happen to reside in another community elsewhere outside the city limits of Stamford, after you become citizens, I would ask all of you to please go to your respective town or city offices to begin the registration process. We've had the Department of State already give a brief commentary on the availability of passport services, and we hope you'll take advantage of those. But in the meantime, as we mark today, it's going to be something that you'll remember for a very long time. When we begin the ceremony, our Immigration Services Officer, Ms. Pila, will be asking all of you who are about to become new citizens to rise in order of the names of your countries. So all of that will be a process by which we'll fill the room from the forward point. And that way you'll be proud to represent your countries of birth, national origin, or where you've grown up, and then the time when you become the magic citizen. So without further ado, I would like now to call upon Boy Scout Troop number nine here of Stamford to please present 
our flags. Color guard, post the colors. All rise. Please remain standing while we have the performance of our national anthem by Miss Ayante, Ayanta, I'm sorry, Ayana Doreste, who's a fifth grader here in the local community, and I hear she's got a great voice. So let's give it up for Ayana. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the red boss we washed were so gallantly streaming and the rockies regular boss best in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave For the land of the free And the home of the Thank you, Ayanna. Guard detachment, please retire the colors. Please be seated. So now magically the room will transform from library auditorium to United States District Courtroom. I would like to call upon the designated clerk of the court to open the court proceedings so that we may get underway. All right, this is always a very happy occasion for us. You know, we have immigration problems these days politically, but that doesn't apply to you because you've all been, uh, let's see if this will work. <laughs> okay, I can hear myself. Can you all hear? All right. Uh, you know, we've had interesting problems with immigration politically, but that doesn't apply to you because you've all been through a long process of five years for most of you with a lot of hoops to jump through and you've jumped through them. You've done everything you're supposed to do to become citizens. So it's always a, a very positive thing for us to be able to have these sessions. We have them in the courthouses, uh, in the three federal courthouses in Connecticut and all over the United States uh, several times each year. But it's nice for us to come to the libraries. I want to congratulate the peer group because uh, libraries are changing, as you know, uh, dramatically. And it's important to have groups like this peer group to uh, organize things and to keep the interests of the libraries, which are very important to us. I, I spent over 50 years living in Stanford using this, this library. And it was here. It was here the whole time that I was 
here living in, in this community. And it has branches, and I use of those branches. So the library is a very important thing, and it's wonderful that they do these programs with us. And it's wonderful to have you all with us today. All right, I'm going to take a motion from Ms. Pila. That's a long motion that we want to pay tribute to. Yes, by all means. Thank you. Please do. Good morning. My name is Giselle Pilla, and I'm an officer with United States Citizenship and Immigration Services. The Peer Library Citizenship Collaborative was formed in 2016 as part of a United States Citizenship and Immigration Services grant to Hartford Public Library. The partnership is comprised of librarians representing public libraries throughout Connecticut, meeting to share information, resources, and best practices in order to increase their ability to better serve immigrants in their local communities. This week, we celebrate the accomplishments of this partnership by naturalizing 200 applicants from 45 different countries at our peer partnership libraries such as this. This morning, 40 candidates for naturalization have come to this beautiful site to pledge their allegiance to the United States of America. You are a very diverse group. You have come from 28 different countries around the globe. In a few moments, you will stand as one and become citizens of the United States of America. Candidates for naturalization, I will now call the names of your country of origin. I ask that you stand and remain standing until all countries have been called. Bolivia. Brazil. People's Republic of China. Colombia. Cuba. Denmark. Dominican Republic, Ecuador, Haiti, India, Italy, Jamaica, Macedonia, Mexico, Morocco, Netherlands, Pakistan, Panama, Peru, Philippines, Poland, Republic of Korea, Russia, Taiwan, Ukraine, United Kingdom, Venezuela, Vietnam. At this time, all candidates for naturalization should be standing. Honorable Judge Eggington, it is my pleasure to present 40 candidates for naturalization. Each has personally examined under oath by a designated officer. Each has demonstrated an understanding of the English language unless exempt and knowledge and understanding of the fundamentals of history and principles and form of the government of the United States. Each has been found to be a person of good moral character. Attached to the principles of the Constitution of the United States and well disposed to the good order and happiness of the United States. The investigations of the government have been completed in their cases and each has been found to meet all requirements of the law to be naturalized. Your Honor, on behalf of the, of the government of the United States, I respectfully Respectfully, excuse me, recommend that upon taking the oath of allegiance, you grant the name changes and that all applicants be admitted as citizens 
of the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you. I will grant the motion before I forget to do that. I will grant the motion both as to the changes of name and the admission once you take the oath. Now, what I'd like you to do, those of you who are all standing, remain standing, and raise your right hands, and repeat after me in sequence, and we'll go through it paragraph by paragraph. I hereby declare on oath, I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state or sovereignty, of whom or which I have heretofore been a subject or citizen. And I will support and defend the Constitution and the laws of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. I will bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by the law. And I will perform non-combatant service in the armed forces of the United States when required by the law. And I'll perform work of national importance under civilian direction when required by the law. And I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So help me God. You are citizens. I'll be very quick, uh, take seats and relax. Uh, I'll be very quick because I'm going to introduce Ms. Pila again to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And then I'm going to ask our speakers, I'm delighted to have Jim Himes and David Martin here with me today, uh, the mayor of the city and of course our United States Congressman. And Jim has been a wonderful United States Congressman as to that. So it's a delighted to have him and, and David join me today in handing out these certificates and they will make some remarks to you also after we have the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. But there are two things I'd like you to have to do for us. One is uh, register and vote and there are people available to help you register and vote and you'll find that's easy to do in this country. I know a lot of you came from places where you couldn't do that so I'm speaking to the confirmed. When I tell you that I've registered in this very important election that we will have in November. I hope you will participate in that. Secondly, uh, we have these sessions in our courts throughout the, United, uh, throughout the United States and throughout this district of Connecticut. And I hope when you're asked to serve on juries for us, you will do so. That's another obligation you have as citizens. And you'll find that... Uh, it's an interesting experience for you to go through, so I hope that you will be called for jury service and that you'll respond to it. All right, I'll ask Ms. Pilla to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I hope everyone can please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, before we uh, hand out the uh, certificates, uh, we'll have some remarks by Mr. Hines and Mr. Martin. Thank you, Your Honor, and uh, congratulations to all of you new citizens and um, and your families. Uh, this is one of the very best things I get to do as a member of Congress is to, is to uh, see people who have taken an affirmative decision and done the work 
to say, I want to become an American citizen. Many of us uh, were citizens in virtue of our birth, and we didn't have to work for it nearly as hard as you did. Uh, this is the one room where I know everybody knows my name because you're tested on it. And I, uh, <laughs> uh, I, one of the many reasons I enjoy these ceremonies. But really, um, before, I, uh, before I introduce my friend and the mayor of Stanford, um, I, I want to tell you, uh, these ceremonies uh, refresh my pride and my patriotism, because it's in moments like this that we really remember um, what the United States is. It's different than every country you came from, because this is the only country on earth where we all came from different places. Uh, and we are bound only by an idea, a set of ideas that are incorporated into our Constitution, uh, and which you studied, and which you know better than many uh, people who have been American citizens for decades. Uh, one of the great national treasures of this country, the Reverend Martin Luther King, said it best when he said, and of course he was referring to the fact that some people came to this country not voluntarily the way you did, but when he said, we may have all come to this country on different ships, but today we're in the same boat. And, um, and, and uh, I want to leave you with just one thought, which is you've been granted something today and you've worked for something that is truly remarkable in human history, to be a citizen of the United States and celebrate today, but also know that the United States is only great because citizens are willing to work for it, to bend for it. You just pledge to do service or serve in the military if you are asked, but, to, but being a citizen of this democracy um, and by the way, I think we can all sit down. Okay, please, please, please sit down. Please, I'm realizing everybody's standing. <laughs> it was a bit, bit bizarre giving a speech to everybody standing. But um, <laughs> as much as you celebrate today, know that what you're joining is only as strong as the commitment that you are willing to give to it. And what I mean by that is you've now joined a country where power is dispersed. Many of you came from countries where power is not dispersed. This country started 240 years ago because a bunch of people got tired with power concentrated in a British monarch. And so 240 years ago, our founding fathers, today there would be founding fathers and mothers, but 240 years ago it was founding fathers, decided that they would create a government that, whose power came from one thing and one thing only, not divine right, not because you belong to this family, not because you seized power militarily, but power is only legitimate here if it is based on the consent of the governed, all of you. And they also decided that power would be split up. I'm a member of Congress. I have a tiny little bit of power. The mayor has a tiny little bit of power. The judge has a tiny little bit of power. And that's very deliberate. That's very deliberate, and we are designed to fight with each other. If I tell Mayor Martin that I've got a better idea on how Stanford schools can be run, he'll say, that's not your business. <laughs> if the Congress of the United States design, des, decides to pass uh, legislation that will impinge on your right to say what you want, the judge and his colleagues will say, you can't do that. That is the genius of this country. But it also means that it's a messy political system. The judge can say what he, what, what I just, the example I just gave, because you have the right to criticize me and I have the right to criticize you. I have the right to speak ill of your religion. It may not be polite, but it is a right incorporated into the First Amendment uh, of the Constitution. So it's a messy thing, this democracy, and it only works if we're willing to participate in that messy argument. I often tell High school students, don't get turned off by our political system because there's an argument. Embrace the argument. There are countries where there is no argument. In China, there's not much of an argument. In Iran, there's not much of an argument. In Russia today, there's not much of an argument. You don't want to be in a political system where there isn't an argument. So do it civilly. Do it as American citizens, understanding that we're all in the same boat, but embrace that argument and participate. You won't do this, but don't ever take the vote for granted. Uh, again, all of us, well, the judge, the judge, the judiciary, of course, in this country, as you know better than most citizens, is appointed, but the rest of us are elected, uh, and that means that we have to listen to you, but we only listen to you if you exercise that most sacred moment of your American citizenship, which is voting. Voting for your mayor, voting for your governor, voting for your congressman, and ultimately voting for your president. So congratulations, and don't ever forget this feeling, and as you feel one, 
Tuesday morning in November when it's cold outside and you don't want to vote or if your neighbor annoys you because he's challenging your uh, political beliefs, think of this moment and use it as energy to be a participant in this incredible, messy, loud, disorderly, but ultimately wonderful democracy. Congratulations. With that, let me introduce... Um, For those of you, uh, we are here in, uh, in, in Stanford, and in this country, of course, every town in, uh, has its chief executive, um, and uh, the chief executive, the mayor uh, of Stanford, Connecticut, is a, is a, a close friend and, and now dedicated to serving those of you who live in Stanford. Uh, it's a delight to introduce uh, Mayor David Martin. So I, I don't know how to follow that. <laughs> It is true that I have very little authority. I have about this much. Just maybe, maybe not quite. <laughs> there are a lot of people who in fact believe their only purpose in life is to make difficult my life instead. Um, I did have one disagreement though. If you have a recommendation on how to make our schools better, I will listen. It is not your job, but I will listen to any suggestions that you might have. Am I correct in saying, Judge, that most of the people in this room have spent five years on their road to citizenship? Yeah, they've jumped through all the hoops. So I can get a business degree in two years. I can get a law degree in three years. I could probably get a doctorate degree in any number of different disciplines in four years. And you've spent five years becoming U.S. citizens. And... I sit here and think about some of the special occasions in my life where I graduated from, some, from one thing to another and they were all memories that I continue to keep with me and I hope that after your journey of the last five years you will keep this memory with you. It is an important day and in some ways it's more important to the people sitting up here than maybe it is to you. I had a friend of mine who was um, Turkish. He came to America and he expressed to me his extraordinary amazement and in fact disbelief about the freedom that is here in this country. And he could say pretty much whatever he wanted and no one was going to come to arrest him. Um, heck, our First Amendment not only guarantees the right to speak, it gives the right to lie. You can lie in this country, and we permit that. And I'm, I'm sure the congressman and I and the judge have seen many, many examples of this. <laughs> and although he did not originally come with the intention of becoming a citizen, he found this so powerful, so important, that he made the same commitment that you have made to becoming a U.S. citizen. And he's very happy, even though now he's temporarily back in Europe, nonetheless. He, he wants to be back here as much as he can. And the, only other, only, the only other thing that I wanted to share with you is that in the past hundred years or so, most people who've come to this country, well, some have come for the love of their family, to join a family that was already here. But many have come because of the oppression, whether it was religious oppression or political oppression or just plain violence and danger that came from their native countries to come here. And some came for opportunity because the opportunities to provide for themselves and their families really didn't exist. And the idea that if you had a better idea and you worked really hard is in fact, to, and you can therefore succeed, is in fact to me what the American dream is. And I think sometimes those of us who were born here don't have a complete understanding or a full understanding of just how wonderful these opportunities are. And for you to go through the efforts, despite all of our rancor and disagreement, for you to go through the effort become U.S. citizens and say, this is the place that is so precious, I want to be here, it makes me proud. 
And it gives me an opportunity once again to think about why is it that what we have is so precious that you would journey through space and time in order to become U.S. citizens. And so in some deep way, you affirm what I love about this country. And so while I say congratulations, I also say thank you. And may your journey forward be everything that you hope it will be in this country. Thank you very much. Congratulations again. I'd like to thank both Representative Himes and Mayor Martin here of Stanford for participating in this morning's special oath ceremony. And to just follow up on rather a poignant remark made by the mayor, if I may segue to that. Your Turkish friend, for example, after having naturalized, can come back to the United States whenever he pleases. He need not abide any of the restrictions on staying outside the United States that many of you who were former green card holders were bound by. These are one of several rights that are now held unalienable from those who have just naturalized. For example, you may petition for varied family members. You can stay outside the country as long as you like. You can run for political office where citizenship is a preliminary requirement. There's only one or two in the United States, and you learned about this in your citizenship classes that you may not run for, but who would want that job right now anyway? <laughs> so with that being said, I'm going to call upon our clerk of the court to close the actual oath ceremony, followed by which we will be presenting the certificates of naturalization one by one to the proud new citizens and members of their family may come forward and take photos and be met and congratulated by our dignitaries and by our honorable judge. So, Madam Clerk. Be seated, please. We want to encourage you to take photographs. Maria Araceli Pineda. And family, if you want to take photos, this is that opportunity. Feel free to come as far up as you'd like to take photos. Vlad Zalone. Liliana Guadalupe Martinez Buckby. Wang. Danny Bojorquez.
Michelle Khan. <laughs> Soon Go Kwan Conway. Yisha Matthew Kalayil. Romulo da Silva Celestino. <laughs> Cristian Alberto Ramirez Castillo. Magozata Katarina Wetland. Jason Dario Rosso Amesquita. <laughs> Peter Kroon Lashman Rao Missouri Nana Swami Rao. Husband and wife, Marilyn and Volka Mustafi. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Natalia Victorina Krifenka.
That's right. <laughs> Gwendolyn Yvonne Cotterell Udoconis. Maria Mariveles Mula. Durbena Salon Sakowski. Hoffman Rafael Ligeron Arias. Lázaro Campillo Ocanto. Vicenta Nelly Basurto García. Daniel James Standish. Deepak Mukesh Doble. Shio May Lin. Glennis Neten Jane. Emilian. 
Davison. Prophet Andre. Albert. <laughs> Henrik Moeller Jensen Patricia Ferreira Sensi. Marilda Melina Herrera Medrano. Pam. <laughs> Rory Ramon Kalu. Christopher Charles Hall.
Andrés Eduardo Whitkey Bella Rosa. <laughs> Andrés Felipe Sosa Canas. Gareth John Leah. Rodríguez Tolentino. So this concludes our special oath ceremony here in Stanford this morning. Congratulations to all the new citizens and thanks for coming. Have a great rest of your day. One moment. The registrar of voters is this woman in gray and she's coming forward. Do you represent the entire state or just Stanford? Stanford. Yeah. Right. Any town USA. Welcome to you all. Welcome to our country. I love our country and we're glad to have you here.